So we don't have a lot of time to talk about distributed query execution. Um, I can really briefly go over this or just answer questions. What would you prefer? Do you guys still have Tyler's class? No. No one's really coming. All right, let's do it. Yeah, feel free to, to leave if you have a, if you have a constraint. Um, and I'll keep talking until we get kicked out. <laughs> so I don't think we're going to talk about it. Fuck, do you have to go somewhere? I have a class in like an hour. Oh, I'll be done way before. It's not going to take an hour. Yeah. Five. Maybe five more minutes. Yeah, sure. So the, when you look at distributed query execution in a textbook, this is usually the diagram that, that or the kind of diagram that you look at. Um, now, when we first started building distributed query execution, we didn't really know what we were doing, and this is pretty scary. So we were like, okay, let's throw this away. Let's think about it a little bit easier. So in MemSQL, there are kind of two tiers of computation. Uh, and these are logical tiers, they can also be physical tiers, um, but for the sake of this discussion, think about them sort of logically. Um, there are aggregators, which are responsible for coordinating distributed queries, and there are leaves, which are responsible for storing and computing over slices of data. So you send a query to an aggregator, it figures out what it needs to do across the cluster, computes across the cluster, um, kind of uh, returns results back to aggregators or talks to the other leaves. Um, we'll talk about both cases. Uh, the aggregator mudges together the results and sends them back to the client. So this is sort of the generic flow. Input SQL goes into the aggregator. It gets converted to some partial SQL-like thing, which the leaves execute. Um, it's actually some kind of superset of SQL. Um, the leaves send partial results back to the aggregator. The aggregator combines them and then sends final results back to the client. <coughs> Now, sometimes leaves also need to talk to each other. Uh, and so there's also this kind of intermediate step of data shuffling. Is that done for SQL as well? Or <laughs> yes, and we'll see how. But it's not normal SQL. Uh, so it's much easier to reason in terms of shipping SQL. Uh, we get a lot of uh, flack about this. Why are you sending SQL around? That sucks. SQL is just a serialization of an operator tree. And if there's something in an operator tree which you can express in SQL, you just change your internal SQL to support it um, and deserialize it on the other side. Uh, another sort of similar argument is, oh, well, doesn't that incur a lot of cost because you need to reparse the SQL? It turns out that the plan cache actually helps you a lot there. So it doesn't really matter that much. Um, so this is uh, the implementation of a very simple query, select count star. So you send the query, MemSQL is MySQL compatible over the wire, so you use the MySQL client library, client program, or any tool um, that supports MySQL to send queries. Um, here's select count star, you send it to the aggregator, the aggregator says, well, what do I need from the leaves? I need select count star over the slices of data that they own. Um, so it sends select count star to the leaves. Each leaf locally executes select count star, and the sort of union of those results looks something like this, where there's a partition, um, which is a slice of data, and a count. Um, and the aggregator generates a SQL-like plan, which is just select sum of count from these leaf counts. Um, and that's the final result that it sends back to the client. Um, so, 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 so select count star going from distributed optimizer to local. Every leaf tier is going to compile that in LLVM. Yep. And then there's the sum of there, that's LLVM as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so these guys are generating sort of mutually exclusive code. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. And it can all be done in parallel, and, and there's all kinds of goodies and, and optimizations with making that part faster, too. So here's a slightly more complex query. Um, it's hard to read, and I don't expect you to actually read this stuff. The point is that here, uh, we send this complex query to the distributed optimizer, which tells the leaves to do two things. One is, hey, you're going to have to reshuffle some data. Um, here's how you're going to need to reshuffle it. Start figuring that out. And hey, you're going to need to pull the results of some reshuffled data. Here's how you need to pull it. Start figuring that out. Um, the leaves kind of do both of those things. Once the second thing finishes, you can merge results back on the aggregator and send them to the client. Um, and then here's an even more complex query where 
it's so big that you can't even kind of fill in these individual spots, but you can get the idea that this becomes more and more and more complex. And Andy and I were talking about this earlier. Um, a lot of the queries that we run in MemSQL are like 100 times as long as what you see here. Um, and these diagrams are 100 times as big. So uh, there's a lot of stuff that we do with extremely complex SQL. So what are the abstractions that this kind of, what is the vocabulary that we use at MemSQL in distributed query execution? So there's a distributed query plan that's created on the aggregator. Um, and what it does is it glues together layers of primitive operations. So there's full SQL available on each leaf. So you can tell a leaf to do something like, hey, select count star over your chunk of data, or run this group by or this join over the data that you have locally. Um, and there are also these two abstractions that we added. They're not real SQL. They're kind of operator tree serialization SQL that are the primitives for moving around data. So remote tables are basically how a query pulls data that's reshuffled, and result tables are sort of how you pre-compute and, and push data um, on the other side. And we'll talk about both of those. So really quickly, the SQL primitives are pretty simple. They're queries over physical indexes. You can hook into global transactional state. In general, each partition of data has full SQL, so you can do all kinds of cool stuff. Gives you access to row stores and column stores. Um, and this is an example of that kind of query. So here, select t.a, t.b, sum of t.price from t. This t refers to the local sort of physical table on the leaf. If there's an index on c, you'll be able to use a local index to seek here. Um, and the sort of traffic that you send back to the aggregator is one row per group, not one row in t. So a lot of systems don't push down anything. They'll just pull all of t to a coordinator node and execute this query. More systems will, or sorry, fewer systems will push down filters like this, and even fewer systems will push down groups. Um, but the fact that we can push down full SQL means that we have a lot of flexibility in exactly what computations we push down to leaves and which ones we reserve to do on the aggregator. So you do, okay, so, so you do query optimizer, then you generate uh, SQL per node or yeah. and then do they also do optimization as well? So we can actually control what optimization we want them to do. Places that we don't want them to do optimization, uh, for example, there's some global optimization that we do uh, which determines how we reshuffle data. Um, and based on how we reshuffle data, we have to know what order we want the join to occur. So for those places, we can plug hints into the SQL tree, which basically tell the optimizer, don't touch the subtree. Let it, let it be like this. And for places, for example, um, if this were where t.c equals 1,000 and t.b equals something else, um, actually deciding based on the cardinalities of that particular index and those parameters, which index it should use, uh, we leave to the leads. Okay. Um, and actually, leads in that kind of case can generate plans which make that decision at runtime based on the value of those parameters. I didn't talk about that here, but basically we use the upper towers of the skip list for cheap estimations. So remote tables um, are pretty cool. They let you address data across leaves. And it's basically a SQL interface plus a custom shard key. We'll look at an example in a moment. But remote tables let you express, not performantly, but express all of the parallel execution primitives that matter in a distributed system. The big one is reshuffling, but there's also stuff like merging data on group keys. Um, and left joins are, I don't know how much you guys talked about distributed left joins, but they are a complete nightmare. Uh, so remote tables give you some kind of primitives you can use there as well. Um, so here's an example of a query that joins a table T and a table S together. Um, and here we're joining T.A on S.B, and we cannot make the assumption that all values of T.A and S.B that match are on the same node. Now, sometimes you can. If they're the same type and they're sharded the same way, then yes, you can make that assumption. But in this case, we can't. And so what we do is instead of referring to S, which would be the local version of S, we refer to this remote version of S. Um, and a naive implementation of this would pull all of S onto this node um, and perform this join, which would give you correct results but be excruciatingly slow. Um, but again, this is I'm showing this to you for the purpose of expressibility. This is not how it's implemented in MemSQL. Here's another one, which it may be a little bit faster. So here, we know that um, T 
uh, the, kind of the assumptions that we just stated aren't true, but t is sharded on a. So you know that if you dynamically shuffle s to be sharded on b, and b's type is the same as t dot a, then each partition of t only needs to pull one hash bucket of values from s dot b, in particular the same hash bucket of values that you have for t dot a. So here you can also express shard keys in remote tables. Now, if you implement remote tables in sort of the naive way, every shard talks to every shard and reruns this computation. So you get something like quadratic performance over something that should be linear, and that is not obviously good. Um, so there's another implementation called result tables, which allow you to figure out how you want to share and cache the results of these uh, pull-based remote tables. Um, one way of thinking about it is remote and result tables together let you express these distributed computations as pull-based operations, but under the hood are implemented as push-based operations. So result tables are shared cache results of SQL queries. Um, and basically what this lets you do is share the result of a scan and computation across readers. Um, they also support streaming semantics. So result tables are kind of similar to temporary tables, but you can say things like, I know I'm only going to read from this this many times, and I only need you to keep around 1,000 values. Um, and again, technically this is an optimization. So you can express all of the primitives that you need in terms of remote tables, but they're prohibitively slow without result tables. Um, and finally, a result table and an RDD and Spark are kind of the same thing. It's this read-only temporary table that you might use some number of times, so it may or may not need to be materialized. And here's a simple example of a result table. So this is um, create a reshuffled version of t as the result of this query and shard it by this thing. Um, and then if the shard key of a remote table and the shard key of a result table match, then you only need to read a small subset of pre-segregated kind of data that's ready to go. And finally, uh, optimization and query optimization is a huge part of MemSQL. So there are all kinds of single machine optimizations, <clears throat> which to your question earlier, a lot of them we push down to the leaves. So we let the leaves figure out which local index makes the most sense to use for a seek, how exactly it wants to sort and group data. We also have SQL to SQL rewrites, which are kind of the most important building block for analytical SQL. Um, we have a cost-based distributed optimizer. Cost-based distributed optimization is kind of the new, very, very hard and interesting problem in query optimizers. Um, commercial implementations are constantly evolving with cost-based distributed optimization. Um, and the big decision that you make is, do I broadcast, which is send uh, some result to every node, or reshuffle, which is, do I send some subset? And there are some cases where you actually get to make a trade-off. Um, and there are many, many more. So query optimizers um, are nowhere near a solved problem, and there's a lot of active work. Uh, we found a very high correlation between people who love math and people who love programming languages, like CMU style uh, PL, to people who really, really like working on query optimizers. So the people at MemSQL who work on query optimizers are kind of a combo of PL people and, and math people.